Welcome back. In this teaching video, I'm looking at 2.3 measures of spread. 2.3 represents chapter 2, section 3 of the Pearson A level Mass Applied Mass Year 1 textbook. Let's go through the definition of a measure of spread. A measure of spread is a measure of how spread out the data is. Here are some examples of measures of spread. Number one, the range, which is equal to the highest value minus the lowest value. Number two, interquartile range, which is equal to the upper quartile minus the lower quartile. Number three, n percent to m percent interpercentile range, which is equal to pm minus pn. Number four, the variance. We're going to look at this in 2.4. And number five, the standard deviation. We're going to look at this in 2.4. Now, to work out the lower quartile Q1, this is given by n over 4th value. To work out the upper quartile Q3, this is given by 3n over 4th value. And the x percentile is given by px equal to x times n over 100th value. These are all the key facts of this section 2.3 measures of spread. I'm going to be implementing these key facts to exam style questions. Here is exam style question 1. The table shows the monthly income for workers in the factory. Here is the table. We've got monthly income and we've got frequency. Calculate the 34% to 66% interpercentile range. Now over here what we have is group data. Group data is always continuous. So to work out the percentiles we have to use a technique called linear interpolation. Right now let's check if the data has gaps. The first class intervals x is between 900 to 1000. 900 is included. The second class interval x is between 1000 to 1100. 1000 is included. So if we go from the first class interval to the second class interval, there is no gaps because of the equal sign at the beginning of each interval. And this applies from the second class interval to the third class interval, from the third class interval to the fourth class interval. So the data does not have gaps. So we can write down no gaps. Okay, now I'm going to label the cumulative frequencies. So let's put down a shorthand CF, cumulative frequency. The first cumulative frequency is 3. The second one is 3 plus 24, which is 27. The third one is 27 plus 28, which is 55. And then the last one is 55 plus 15, which is 70. So that there is the total frequency, the sample size. Let's have a look at what these cumulative frequencies represent. So the first data value up until the third data value will be in this class interval. The fourth data value up until the 27th data value will be in this class interval. The 28th data value up until the 55th data value will be in this class interval. And the 56th data value up until the 70th data value will be in the final class interval. Okay, so now we're ready to apply linear interpolation. Let's start off by calculating P34, the 34th percentile. So P34 is equal to 34 multiplied by the sample size 70 divided by 100. This gives me 23.8 th value. Okay, now 23.8 th value falls in this class interval. Why? Because 23.8 is between 4 and 27. So 23.8 th value falls in 1000 to 1100, 1000 included. Now we're going to draw a diagram. So here is my diagram. We've got lower frequency LF, upper frequency UF. Now there is no lower bound, there is no upper bound because the data has no gaps. Okay, so we stick to 1,000 over here and 1,100 over here. So we've got 1,000 and we've got 1,100. Now P34 is somewhere between these two numbers. That P34 is the 23.8 th value. So I can put 23.8 over here. The lower frequency is the cumulative frequency before the class interval that we are interpolating. So the lower frequency is 3. The upper frequency is the cumulative frequency of the class interval that we're interpolating. This is 27. Now we're assuming that the class intervals are uniformly distributed. So I can form an equation. And that equation is this difference here, P34, 
uh, minus 1,000 divide by this difference over here, 1,100 minus 1,000 is equal to this difference, 23.8 minus 3 divide by this difference, 27 minus 3. So now I can rearrange and work out P34. So P34 is equal to 23.8 minus 3 divided by 27 minus 3 multiplied by 1100 minus 1000, okay, plus the 1000. So I can put this into my calculator, and if I do this, I end up with 1000 and 86 pounds 67 to the nearest penny. So that there is a 34th percentile. In other words, the P34. Now let's go ahead and work out the 66th percentile, P66. So P66 is equal to 66 multiplied by the sample size, which is 70, divided by 100. Okay, so we can put this into our calculator and we get 46.2 th value. Right, now 46.2 th value falls in the following class interval. <clears throat> 1100 to 1200, because 46.2 is between 28 and 55. Okay, it falls in 1100 to 1200. 1100 is included. Now we're going to set up a diagram. So here is my diagram. I've got lower frequency and I've got upper frequency. So over here we've got 1100 and over here we've got 1200. We know that P66 is between 1100 and 1200 and P66 ladies and gents is the 46.2 th value. Okay, right. Now the lower frequency is the cumulative frequency of the class interval before the interval that we are interpolating. Okay, so that would be 27. The upper frequency is the cumulative frequency of the class interval that we're interpolating, which is 55. Assuming that the class intervals are uniformly distributed, we have that this difference over here, P66 minus 1100, divide by this difference, 1200 minus 1100, must equal this difference, 46.2 minus 27, divide by this difference over here, 55 minus 27. Okay, so now we can rearrange and work out P66. So P66 is equal to 46.2 minus 27 over 55 minus 27 multiplied by 1200 minus 1100 plus the 1100. Right, so we can put this into our calculator and we're going to round off to the nearest penny. So if we do this, we get 1,168 pound 57 to the nearest penny. Okay, right, now we can calculate the 34% to 66% interpercentile range. So this technically will be, let's write this down, 34% to 66% IPR, shorthand for interpercentile range, is given by P66 minus P34. So P66 is this, so we've got 1,168 pound 57, take away P34, which is this one over here, 1,086 pound 67. Alright, so we just put this into our calculator and we get the answer. And it will be £81.90. Okay, so that is the final answer. This completes exam style question 1. Here is exam style question 2. The table shows the length of time in minutes it takes 31 students to complete a test. So we've got time and we've got frequency. Calculate the interquartile range. Now over here we've got group data. Group data is continuous, 
So to work out the lower quartile and the upper quartile, hence the interquartile range, we have to use a technique called linear interpolation. Before we use linear interpolation, we need to check if the data has gaps. The first class interval is T is between 40 and 42, 40 is included. The second class interval is T is between 42 and 44, 42 is included. So from the first to the second class interval, there are no gaps. In the same way, from the second class interval to the third class interval, there are no gaps. From the third class interval to the final class interval, there are no gaps. So we can write down no gaps. Okay, now let's label the cumulative frequency. Shorthand CF. The first cumulative frequency is 2. The second one is 2 plus 15, which is 17. The third one is 17 plus 11, which is 28. And the final one is 28 plus 3, which is 31. Okay, the first data value up until the second data value will fall in this class interval. The third data value up until the 17th data value will fall in this class interval. The 18th data value up until the 28th data value will fall in this class interval. And finally, the 29th data value up until the 31st data value will fall in this class interval. Okay, so now we're ready to apply linear interpolation. Let's first start by calculating the lower quartile, Q1. Okay, so Q1 is equal to the sample size 31. We have 31 students divided by 4. So if we put this into our calculator, we get 7.75 th value. Now, the 7.75 th value falls in this class interval because 7.75 is between 3 and 17. So 7.75 th value falls in this particular class interval. Okay, now I'm going to set up a diagram. So here is my diagram. I've got lower frequency, I've got upper frequency. Over here we put 42, and over here we put 44. We know that Q1 is between 42 and 44. Q1 represents the 7.75 th value. The lower frequency is the cumulative frequency of the class interval before the interval that we're interpolating. So in this case, it's going to be 2. And the upper frequency is the cumulative frequency of the class interval that we are interpolating. So this is 17. Assuming that the class intervals are uniformly distributed, we have that this difference over here. So Q1 minus 42 divided by this difference. 44 minus 42 must equal this difference, 7.75 minus 2, divided by this difference, 17 minus 2. Now we can make Q1 the subject. So Q1 is equal 7.75 minus 2 divided by 17 minus 2, multiplied by 44 minus 42, plus the 42. Okay, so we can put this into our calculator and we round off to three significant figures. Now, in my previous exam style question, I rounded off to the nearest penny because we were dealing with money. But in general, stats and mechanics, you should be rounding to two or three significant figures. Right, so Q1 in this case will equal 42.8 minutes to three significant figures. Okay, so we have 42.8 minutes. Now let's go ahead and work out the upper quartile. So Q3. So Q3 is equal 3 lots of the sample size 31 divided by 4. Okay, so that there is the formula for Q3. Now if we put this into our calculator, we get 23.25 th value. Okay, so... The 23.25 th value falls in the following class interval. T is between 44 and 46, where 44 is included. Why? Because we know that 23.25 is between 18 and 28. Okay. Right, so now we can set up a diagram. So here is my diagram. 
I've got lower frequency, upper frequency. Okay, so over here I can put 44, and over here I can put 46. We know that Q3 is between 44 and 46. Q3 is the 23.25 TH value. The lower frequency is going to be 70, and the upper frequency is going to be 28. Assuming that the class intervals are uniformly distributed, if I take this difference, Q3 minus 44, and I divide by this difference, 46 minus 44, this must equal this difference, 23.25 minus 17, divide by this difference, 28 minus 17. Okay, so now we can rearrange and make Q3 the subject. So Q3 is equal to 23.25 minus 17 divided by 28 minus 17 multiplied by 46 minus 44 plus the 44. So I can put this into my calculator and round off to three significant figures. So if I do this, I get 45.1 minutes to three significant figures. So I've got my Q1, I've got my Q3, I can now calculate the interquartile range. So shorthand, IQR interquartile range is given by Q3 minus Q1. So we have 45.1 minus 42.8. Okay, so I can put this into my calculator and if I do this, I get 2.3 minutes. So that there, ladies and gents, is my IQR. In other words, the interquartile range. And this completes exam style question two. So ladies and gents, if you found this video useful, 2.3 measures of spread, please don't forget to subscribe, leave a like, leave a comment, turn on your notification bell so that you receive notifications every time I post teaching videos.